And we do have a lot of off-ice issues as well to deal with, uh, namely Arizona. And Frank Cervelli on Daily Faceoff today reporting that the NHL is putting together two different schedules, one that accounts for the Arizona Coyotes playing in Arizona and another schedule for if the Arizona Coyotes are relocated to Salt Lake City. With that, we'll bring in, live from Vancouver, our man Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada and 32 Thoughts. Hello, Fridge. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Uh, so the uh, the report today on uh, Daily Faceoff about uh, the two schedules, I mean, we've been talking a lot about contingency plans and what the NHL needs to do. I'm guessing none of this would be surprising. This is the sort of natural course of business i would imagine that you know before the atlanta thrashers moved to winnipeg there was the thought process of having two schedules one for a team in georgia one for a team in manitoba but your thoughts on the report today well i i think that i don't really dispute any of it i think it's all uh I, like i i can't say a hundred percent that it's all airtight but it's it's it fits exactly with what I've been hearing and we've been hearing. I think it's, I think he's, I, I think he's got a lot of accuracy there. And, you know, like it was, like we said yesterday, um, like we said yesterday, the NHL is preparing for the future of the Arizona Coyotes short term and the long term future of hockey in Arizona. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, basically, so, we know there's the auction on June 27th, but the Coyotes are on record as saying if they win the auction, they probably won't be ready to play in the new arena until fall of 2027. And I think one of the big questions here is, can this stay the way it is for three more years? And, um, you know, and, and I think to a lot of people, the answer is, I'm not sure they're really thrilled about that idea, uh, even if they do win the auction. So, yes. Jeff, I do think one of the things they've been talking about is uh, do we move the team and then uh, do we make it so as part of the sale, Alex Murillo has, quote unquote, whatever you want to call it, the right of first refusal pending approval by the NHL board, some language like that, to be the next owner of the ne- or the owner of the next Arizona franchise whenever it comes. I absolutely believe that right. is on the table and I think that's one of the things they've discussed. And I think the reason why, uh, and look, if it's Utah, I think we're going to know soon. Um, and I think that uh, by the fact that this came out today, it might even be sooner than people thought. Um, like, I, I don't think this is something where, um, you know, for one of the things here, like the uh, you know Utah shares its building with the NBA. If uh, so, yep. like you'd have to know too, like what your dates are, what your availability is, things like that. And I I don't think it's necessarily a rush, but you got to do all this stuff. And so mm-hmm. I do think this is on the table. Uh, I do think that this is something they've been discussing. I I think one of the reasons you're seeing the NHL kind of I don't know if slow play it or downplay it a bit is, and this is the one thing that we have talked about a lot is, is that Murillo is a bit of a wild card. He's got a lot of pride um, and they don't, and, and they know that they, they want the smoothest way to get this done is to get him agree so that there's no legal hang up or anything like that. And, and right. this, through this whole process, Jeff, they've tried to be really careful with them to make it and they know nothing is done until it's done. So I, th- I think the reason you're seeing the NHL not really comment on it or um, like just maybe downplay it a bit is that they know they've got to get Murillo to agree and they don't want to do anything that's going to upset the whole process. But like I said, I, I think this is very real and I think it's what they've been working on for a little bit of time. And you know the other thing I should say, Jeff. No, I, I know it's kind of been it's kind of been hot and cold and hot and cold. Like it was really hot a few weeks ago, and then it cooled down, and then it got hot again. 
Well, it's hot now as the season winds down and the playoffs are going to begin and there will be no Arizona Coyotes involved in it. And I, I know we've we've gone back and forth on, on this one before. And I know I've asked you about this one, but this is one of the dynamics that I'm, I still continue to be curious about. Um, the BOG. Now, the Board of Governors, I'm sure, just want this issue to be dealt with and moved past and period. Let's get through mm-hmm. it all. Um, do you get a sense, and again, we're talking about 32 different owners here, but do you get yep. a sense of where they're at with all of this? Like, I understand the idea of Gary Bettman wanting to make sure that Alex Borello has his hand held here and he doesn't get upset and, you know, there's no landmines and there's no, you know, big moments where he'll have a horrible reaction. I get that. And what I am curious about, though, is, and again, you're never going to get 32 all on the same page, but here we go. How does the BOG feel about all of this? I, I just don't think the owners, like, I, I just don't think they want this to continue for three more years. I, I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that that's, uh, I, I think that's exactly what the situation is. Um, it's, I, I, I think that's what it comes down to. I, you know, pe- like, people have been very patient here with Arizona. And Batman's like Batman has fought for Arizona uh, really hard. Yeah. Um, I, I think people recognize that there is a good market there, and it's a market you want to be in. That's why I think this is all part of the plan to leave. Like again, we've been saying for a long time, it's going to be leave and go back if it happens, and that's why I believe this is all part of the process. Um, and uh, but I, I think you just look at the current situation and say it's it can't continue. It's 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 untenable. And 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 uh, I think that's the way I felt for some time. And I think now Bettman kind of agrees with it. OK, uh, this story continues uh, before now, we get the other to what thing, we saw the other last thing I night. Did, I did want to mention oh. the other thing I did want to mention here, Jeff, is is the, it's going to yeah. be interesting to see what happens with the players uh, in the sense that I believe there are some players who have asked what their rights are in this situation. Um, you know, like, you know, how many of them, are there any of them that would say, look, I signed with Arizona and I, if I'm not with Arizona, if it's not in Arizona, what can I do about it? And I think the answer is not much. I mean, so in terms of like, you can't not go, if you're signed to a contract, you, your contract yep. transfers with the sale, but it'll be interesting to see if any players say, like, you know, I'd rather be traded or anything like that. I, I do think they're also, you know, th- that kind of has been discussed as well. And I, listen, I, I do wonder about a lot of, I'll be honest, I'll be, I, I wonder about a lot of longtime employees of the uh, Arizona slash Phoenix Coyotes here as well. Yeah, I, think I, this I do does too. March to this inevitability. You know, I mean, there's some some deep roots and families that have been established, and they're just like bluntly, Elliot. There's a lot of people that aren't in a position to leave, that aren't in a position to go. Like, listen, you know, management, coaching staff, players, etc. Et like, they're they're used to this, but there are a lot of people that have put down roots in in Arizona, in Phoenix, in Scottsdale, wherever, um, that are just not in a position to leave right now. And yeah. I, I would imagine a lot of these people are are worried. Uh, about what the future may bring here. 